I know, Los Santos is a dream when you've got cash to burn. Fancy cars, clothes, big parties, nice buildings, beautiful girls and boys. But here's the twist. I'm going to finish GTA 5 without spending a single dime. Yep, that means no flashy suits, no over the top guns and not even a can of coke may be purchased. I will keep track of my stats in the menu where we see perfectly who spent the most on fuckers. Um, I mean on independent women. Ah, leave me alone and stay tuned to not miss out the 5 major issues I had with this challenge. We are starting our journey where our heart stopped when we saw what the meaning in life is. Exactly, stealing money and shooting guys in the face, betraying your friends and faking your death. Nah, that's not it as well. Steal cars, race them through the streets of LS and bring them to a salesman of trust. Okay, I see we're not going to find a point in life anyway. Let's move on with the challenge. Frank shows us his script, where Lamar fronts as badly as always. Maybe you got rid of that old yee yee ass haircut you got. Maybe Tanisha will call your dog ass. Obviously, I couldn't spend money on the haircut. The challenge wouldn't make a sense, would it? So I did what everybody would do and tried to steal a bike from a random dude I didn't know and shoot his buddies all over the place. Luckily, the dude came by to say hi and we greeted him with a 9mm in his head, as every good friend would have done. After that, Lemar took our great score and made himself disappear. We arrived at our next destination, where Simon told us to steal the next car and Jimmy's game teached us the most important gaming info. He even showed us the most important weapon in gaming history. After that trauma he gave me, I just had to steal this little prick's car. Here we get to know Michael De Santa, who forced us to drive through a damn showroom window and maybe, just maybe kill unguilty civilians just to teach Simeon a lesson. Franklin was so hard impressed by the actions of Michael that he immediately forgot he was still waiting for his daddy to bring the fresh milk home, which by now has for sure evolved his own ecosystem inside itself. So Frank showed up at Michael's house and what was the first thing Michael teached Frank in his new feather figure he has now? Of course, how to naturally climb a goddamn yacht at full speed on the highway. Just to save his stupid kid Jimmy, who tried to sell the yacht and it got stolen from him. Dude! We got shot in the cooler, and in case you didn't know, shooting a car in the cooler isn't the best idea if you actually want to keep it. So off we went to the next car repair shop, which luckily was just around the corner. Here we have our first real challenge. How the hell are we gonna dodge the payments for the repairs? Oh wait, turns out we didn't have to. Free repairs, baby! Anyway, I got a little too excited while riding the bike. Fun fact, slamming into a light pole at 50 km isn't exactly great for health. Which leads us to the next step in our challenge. We can't afford to die. Why? Because this isn't Europe, where healthcare is free. Nope, this is America, where every hospital visit costs at least a liver. So how do we get around this little problem? Simple, we just restart the game from the last save point. Now that we sorted that out, we can head to the the next mission where we gladly missed Frank's aunt and met Chop our sweet doggo for the first time. We instantly took use of such a good boy by letting him bite some balls of a real creep. But unfortunately Lamar is our good friend and we managed to get rolled over by his stupidity again. So we had to let the gangster run away. Franklin ran after that to his new daddy Michael and had to witness a bad family issue which led to Mike ripping the villa of a serious businessman Martin Madrez down the hill who then gently asked him to rebuild the damage he had done. This obviously forced Michael to reconnect with his old, fancy and totally normal friend Lester, who we needed for our first big heist. In case of our death, which could occur on this heist, we had to teach Jimmy a lesson on how to not speak to our psychotic daddy. So we broke his TV and brought Jimmy to tears, like the little bitch he is. And because we're such a considerate folks, our apology was forcing him into an awkward as hell bike race. Gosh, the cringe was off the charts. We had to rent the bike, but there's one time issue with that. We're in the no spending cash challenge. Luckily for us, our genius son finally had a good idea for once. Please don't shoot the bike rental guy out of like force of habit. So naturally, we shot that seller three times in a row, failed the mission and got to skip the whole scene which didn't cost us any money in conclusion. After that, Jimmy went right back to his usual routine of being a snitch. He told Michael Tracy is doing some adult movies. I mean sure, I'm kinda glad adult movies aren't exactly the best career choice. I guess. After receiving this nice info, Michael did what every normal dad would do. He threw the creep from the yacht and gave another two a self massage. After throwing Tracy out on the beach, we went straight for a drink with our old Paul Lester, who we haven't seen in a decade. And what's the first thing this weirdo does after 10 years of radio silence? 
yeah. He turns us into a freaking hipster. That's right, Lester's genius idea was to force us into some ugly hipster shorts, because apparently nothing screams welcome back like overpriced awful fashion choices. Seriously, who's gonna blow cash on these terrible shorts? So naturally, we did the only sensible thing. We blasted the saleswoman three times so the mission would fail and we could avoid the fashion disaster. Now back on track with our mission to save the world. I mean Los Santos. But who am I kidding? We just want to see this. Oh! Wow, it's so magical. Our wonderful and understanding wife Amanda reminded us how priceless she is. I'm just kidding, she's horrible. She tried to steal some bullshit and now we have to help her or Michael will have to pay a lawyer to get her out. And this is nothing that may happen. So he freed her. It's not like the cops have her ID. <laughs> But never mind. We cleared the issue with our wonderful wife and headed to the important stuff in life, preparing for the jewelry store heist. I'm not that smart, but the game doesn't know this fact. Sheesh. Anyway, as I said, I'm not that smart and I made a dumb mistake with the second shooter. I figured, hey, it's a smart way, so shooting shouldn't be that important, right? Spoiler alert, I picked a total idiot and you'll see why that was a mistake later. So the heist was planned and we are waiting for Lester's call. In the meantime, we tried to do business like Lamar said. Business. And what does business mean in the head of Lamar? Yeah, buy some gun. But we had the next issue of our challenge. But you know the drill already. Anyway, I just started blasting. After saving the challenge for once again, we got to know what the smart plan of Lamar was. Yeah, meeting literally a week or so later with the dude chopped with his balls off. Because we had a bad day and do some business, of course this ended up in a pew pew session. After shooting some juice, we were ready to rob the rich ones. We stole the last bit of jewelry where we had 4.56 mil in the bag. And Michael said a dumb line he better should not have said. You forget a thousand things every day, pal. Make sure this is one of them. You're not as lost as I am, so you remember me saying I did a mistake by choosing the second shooter. Here is why. This little cripple. How did it even fall? And by rewatching the recording, I see I could have picked the damn bag up. Damn, I told you, I'm stupid as fuck. Never mind. We played a little bumper cars and escaped somehow. Franklin celebrated his success in the only thinkable place, a damn strip club, where Mike invited him home, which we accepted gratefully. Of course, Michael wanted to celebrate as well, but suddenly our old friend Davey showed up to tell us how stupid it is to rob a store or being in some kind of witness protection. Not only was it a bad move for witness protection, but our totally a normal and clean cut buddy Trevor heard Michael's golden and incredible stupid line. That's what brought us here, to Trevor smashing Johnny's head the same way you should smash that like and subscribe button but hey only if you're enjoying the video so far and i'm guessing you are since you haven't dropped any hate comments yet or did you ah uh, whatever so here we are with trevor officially back in the game and for him being able to go and meet michael he had to finish some business and what does business mean in the head of trevor yeah make your partners vanish Trevor, being the business mastermind that he is, saw an opportunity with almost no competition left. So naturally, he set up a professional meeting with a supposedly high-tier Chinese businessman who turned out to be, well, not so high-tier or professional as he expected. He decided to give our new business partner a little insider look into how he operates because what's a better introduction than shoving them into some freezing cold ice? And as a relaxing music, let them listen to gunshots and explosions. That's just a typical business them. Two minutes later, he let them out, nearly frozen to death. I mean, come on, how is that even possible? After this failure, Trevor went back home just to hear the bikers smash his, let's say, villa. And what happens when a bunch of bikers fuck up Trevor's priced statue, which is how he says, full of emotions, exactly. He shoots the cash of ammunition three times in the face just to take a sniper for free and shoot the shit out of them. And then steals their stuff and throws it into the ocean. As we all saw, Trevor finished his business day with success. Kinda. And he had all time in the world to head to Los Santos, where he was gonna find new joy in life. We all know what Trevor is in town, definitely for the strip club. Just kidding, it's actually Michael's home sweet home, where Michael almost did the right thing and punched his annoying kid Jimmy right in the face. But of course, Trevor with his godlike timing showed up and ruined Michael's chance to lay down some parenting. Before Trevor could even give his old buddy Michael a hug, Jimmy, the rival the snitch, squealed again and told Trevor and Michael that Tracy is going to do some awful dance show. Even Trevor, with his questionable taste, knew she's a terrible dancer, so he made Michael drag him himself to find the creep Laszlo. We set him up with an OnlyFans account and even helped him with his first video. How sweet of us. Michael knew having Trevor around meant trouble. So he met up with Baby. who knew Michael had a bad headache, decided the best remedy was to hit him in the head. How thoughtful of him. Michael then woke up in the mortuary, a place we've all visited after a 
wild weekend, where he discovered a body was mislabeled and made his dramatic escape out of the window, like he was auditioning for John Wick. All dirty from jumping into the trash, Michael figured the best place to hide his filth was among some FIB rats, where he first met Steve Haynes. Like any sane person, Michael's grand introduction to helping Haynes involved jumping for an FIB window and kidnapping someone. Seriously, what's going on? We then delivered a hostage to Haynes, who promptly shoved him into the next van. Michael was a little lost in the woods after that, so he tried some yoga to chill his nuggets. Where Amanda was again the little b she usually is, and Michael freaked out like everybody else will do. But for some freaking reason, he's the freak here. I don't get it. To save the broken family, Michael forces Jimmy on an adventure, which ended up Michael having the trip of his life. After a shameful ride to our home, we discovered our family was gone. Here we have our first real problem. So Jimmy, our son, took our car and some money from the bank. To be precise, free grand is what he took. And I was looking for a way around this. And the only way to get around that is to not play the game. So no, there is no way. I mean, I could have transferred the money to a phone, but this is nothing we may do, so I have to live with this. That's a free chaos. This is hard. So as every other human being will do, we try to talk about it with our friends. But Trevor gave literally zero shit about our feelings. Hey, who is that? Didn't we rescue this dude from getting tortured in that big ass building? Anyway, here we have some water. After the help of Trevor, we managed to assassinate our target, but I'm not sure to this day if that was the right person. Now that we probably killed an unguilty civilian, we get straight into our next issue. So T went to Franking and Lamar to hang out. There he thought giving Franks out 7 bucks for no freaking reason would be a good idea. He gave her the money in a cutscene, so there is again no possibility for me to prevent this from happening. Lamar had again a great business idea and we went with him to a dealer who tried to rip us off. But Trevor is way too long in the business to get f up like that. Somehow we managed to escape with Franklin and we went straight to Lester for another round of dirty work. At this point I'm ready to break my knees like Lester just for some sympathy and start bossing people around town so I can feel like a boss at least once in my life. He gave us just a simple assassination mission which was wasn't exactly rocket science. We managed to escape the cops with ease. Wow, so impressive, right? But apparently Lester was still hungry for more. He demanded that I took out four additional targets for him. Spoiler alert, it was as thrilling as watching paint dry. Let's just breeze this part and move on to something less boring. Maybe something like Trevor finally got Floyd is working at the docks, which led him to do a real job for once in his life, even if it was just for 5 minutes and after letting Floyd get smashed like you do it with the like and subscribe button, he got to some crucial information. Oh man, we totally forgot about Wade. I felt pretty bad for the guy. Even Trevor was so grossed out by Floyd that it was a new low for him. And when Trevor's disgusted, you know things are pretty messed up. Anyway, this leads us to Trevor's heist and I took the Friday strategy here. And what the f***, man, I just cannot imagine how Wade is smelling, man. He will never smell normal, I think. Disgusting. Disgusting. With the U-boat in our hands, the heist was set to go. Frank and Michael joined us because you know, robbing people is just what good buddies do when a friend asks for it. So how did the heist go? Honestly, it went pretty damn well. We dropped some bad bad boys, blow the shit out of the ship and took the bomb. Yeah, you heard correctly. It was a freaking bomb. We stole a f***ing bomb. Trevor, what is wrong with you? Luckily for Los Santos and probably much more cities, our butt naked Lester smelt the fish and took our loot over so nobody gets set even with the ground cause T is selling it to some random government just to make a little dime. But hey, Lester took the bump and we met with the weirdo Steve Haynes. The three c**ts. Gosh, do I hate people like him. I mean, he called us c**ts, okay? Gosh, he has such a punchable face. I would so... <clears throat> and what did the mastermind came up with now? Yeah, we have to rob a truck for them. Cool, you So how are we gonna handle this? Well, let me show you how. No, 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 no. This is not where we start. We are going all the way back to the beginning. So where do I start? Oh, 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 yeah. First, you need a garbage truck. Put the junk Steve in it. Following that, you need a flashy fast car, which you have to park on a not so flashy parking. This will be your getaway car. Afterwards, look for the most hard working, lonely old man you can find. Crush a sip between yours and his bumper, plus hick his tow truck and this car you banged him against five seconds earlier. This step is crucial. Don't mess it up. Next, buy some masks. Whoa. 
Wait a second, this is something we may not do, so we will do our standard 3 times in a row fail strategy. Here is the problem with that. When we skip this mission 3 times, nothing changes, because the mission is literally just buying those masks, so it is a loss to my side as well. The cheapest masks are the one for 50 bucks, let's get them. And no, the no mask option is not an option, nothing happens when I take that. We have the same issue with the boiler suits, they cost a whopping 105 each. This adds up to a total minus with Trevor at 472 dollars, fantastic. And now that we have all, we can and may rob that truck and let Michael, Frank and Trevor do their magic, which is nothing else than just shooting around like the morons they can be. Escaping with our well-placed getaway car was a fortress, therefore we managed to bring the file which we took out of the truck and gave it to Devin Weston, our new maniac in the main story, who offered us to get in contact with a well-known producer, if we steal some cars for the prick, which ended up pretty dirty, you will see later on why. Here we are at the Hollywood Film Studios, where we met Solomon. The register that we made as a contact with. He had a job for us as well. Man, <laughs> what is it with this town that every second dude needs a killer or something in that direction? Anyway, he wanted us to make an actor and his register do the film they promised. So we talked to them in a nice restaurant about our difference. Uh, what do you think where we are? No, we did not, of course. Michael broke some noses and stole a chopper to fly like a freaking maniac. I mean, yeah, he is one. But still, dude, the reason for that is he wanted them to get scared, which he did with success. The actor apologized and everybody had a happy end after that. Except of Michael, Trevor and Frank. They had a meeting with Davey where they got nice outfits. Ah, aren't they sweet? Ah, not the donut, dude. It's not a miracle, everybody hates ya. Gosh, ah, where did we stop? Oh yeah, so we are now in a cop chase slash race, call it whatever you want, where Trevor had his 35 seconds again and we stole the cars. Delivering them into some crappy garage felt really weird for some reason. I think it's Dave what makes it so weird. Yeah. For the next car Devin gave us a nice LSPD chopper like nobody would bet an eye if there was a soaring chopper hovering over them. Anyway, we needed the chopper just to look with the face recognition for our next victim which will get robbed from Franklin, who followed the owner into a parking lot where he killed him for no reason and brought the wonderful car to Devin who loved the car way more than he should have. <laughs> By the way, where is Lester? We haven't heard anything for a while from him. Let's call him up. And of course he gave us two other targets which we took care of. There's nothing more to say. But what I have to say more is the next mission where Trevor met Madame Madresso and her in his and my opinion disgusting so-called husband Mr. Madresso. But he's still a madland cause look what gun he owns. Dude. We shoot down the plane, did a George's backflip Jiha! And another one. Okay, this one didn't work out so well. But we took the file and managed to get out of sight. Ah yeah, the job went perfect. Almost. Now we just have to wait for T. And what the f hell did he do? Ah yeah, there goes the last chance of hope I had for those guys. Nonetheless, did you know you can play fetch the ball with Chop? Oh, that was the false ball. Anyway, let's not forget, we still have more cars to steal for Devin. One is located in not other than the Hollywood Film Studios. And what the film studios have an endless supply of actors. So knocking one out, yeah, no one is going to miss them, especially if they sing this awful. <laughs> we took the car, rode the never stopping radio out to the moon. Damn, what's this button? And brought the car back to Devin. <laughs> what else happened? Oh yeah, do you know what happens when Trevor hears there is an opportunity to piss on Meriwether for no reason? Exactly, he takes the first crop duster, whatever this should be, and puts it in the ass of some big huge transport airplane to steal it, which then gets penetrated anyway. What? So stealing cars, crushing planes and robbing was not enough for Steve and Davy. We all remember what happened the last time Trevor got the info somewhere could be an expensive weapon he could sell. Yep, he stole it to sell it to the government. Perfect idea T. Yeah, I don't know what could possibly go wrong. So here we are, robbing casually a bank just for some money which we need for the chopper that will carry the biological weapon where we somehow managed to escape via train and Steve's assistant took the most of our money we borrowed. We can finally focus on the critical stuff like saving Trevor from certain death for the fifth time. Seriously, it's practically a full time job now. And not only did we save him again, but can someone explain to me why the hell Trevor woke up like a deranged circus clown and decided his big next idea was to rob a train from Meriwether? Because obviously, one epic disaster wasn't enough for him. Okay, what happened? Yeah, he crashed the train straight into another one. And what was all that chaos for? A statue. Yep, you heard me. A freaking statue. One that looks like it could have been made by a five-year-old with a pottery kid. I mean, seriously, what even is this? But here comes Michael, thinking this piece of junk looks like gold and he's 
all set to gift it to Madresso. You know, the same Madresso whose wife Trevor kidnapped. But Trevor is not in the mood for that. Unless Michael promises him to pull the big heist with him. What that is, you will see later on. But firstly, we need to execute the one mission which could end us all. Monkey business. Here Steve and Davey made their hands dirty for the first time. And you know what the reason for that is? They just forgot to tell us that this is a six man job. What the f***? And those are trying to protect us from terrorism and other bad stuff. Wow, I'm got the job worked out fine, kinda. Trevor was finally in a good mood and brought Madrasa's wife back, where he threatened to do the Mike Tyson on him again if he touches her. Yeah, otherwise, the other ear. Of course! Trevor's lust to bite some ears was not fulfilled, and meeting the lovely Deborah was the perfect opportunity to finish that. Finally, she's gone. After taking over our lovely place, the strip club, Trevor rocked the family together for one last heist. The big one! While Michael was meditating for the big heist, at least trying so, Trevor bursts in and makes him some nice company, which Michael enjoyed a lot. Yeah, well, I got nothing! No one gives a about me. But Trevor got sentimental and came to the great idea to dig the so-called Michael corpse out of the snow. Surprise, it is Brad, if you didn't notice till now. Where the Chinese found him. Get the boyfriend! Boyfriend, motherfucker which took them the whole story for some reason though he was running for los santos so obvious like an elephant in the phone booth ah. this led us to a shootout where michael got caught after abandoning michael franklin casually took the last car for devin and drove almost the longest route that is possible in the game i almost felt like playing euro Trek simulator if there wasn't a shooting and tire popping later on trevor showed us how karma works shut the f up what's up homie huh <laughs> <laughs> the thing about Trevor is he wants his karma to be all the way in the negative area, so he can't direct it to the fall. What was that? What? What was that? Uh, nothing. Ah, I love this scene. I think I love the most here. But who cares about me? Who you should care about is Michael. He's still captured by the Chinese guys. The only problem here is Trevor was not interested anymore into Michael. So Frank had to do the dirty work. Michael was not in a good mood. So him stumbling over those pricks, speeding up his childhood register and killing them was the perfect meditation. And what is it that every time Michael tries to chill, somebody has to f*** up his mood? Yeah. So this little prick just stopped by to ask for another car which Michael gladly didn't give him. Poo. And we had finally the opportunity to smash the little yoga bastard's face with a laptop. Oh, and you surely didn't forget this little creep. Yeah, Michael gave him a glow up. Haha, <laughs> that's a d he even had those creepers which Michael got rid of gladly. And did you know, being in a not so good mental state is not good for you. How about you suck my Especially if you have a prick as therapist like Michael does, this dude charged us 4k for a 15 minute talk where he wasn't speaking at all. I could not find anywhere around this because it's a cutscene again. So this costed us whopping 4k. At this point Michael should have killed himself, that would be way cheaper for the challenge. Yeah, but let's not forget Michael's lovely daughter Stacy. She had a creep following her, not that we cared about that, but not eliminating him would have cost us 10 grand because she would organize some dudes to get rid of the creep in Instead. Now that the family is reunited, it seems like Michael has found peace in his life and for once does something meaningful. Hey, what are you doing, Michael? Michael, you were so close, dude. <sighs> Never mind. Steve and Davey had again some great work for us, where we had to steal casually some files from the FIB building. <laughs> What? But we secured the files like the champs we are and made ourselves disappear. After trying to be a cleaning personnel and even a firefighter in the same week, we met with Davey in the court center, where Haynes showed us his real face and betrayed us. Oh, you knew already he's a prick? Sorry dudes, I didn't know I have Albert Einstein's in my audience. Anyway, we started blasting. Oh, same goddamn leg. What? God! And do you know the whiskers ad where they shake the cat food and the cat runs through the wall? Yeah, that is Trevor, when he hears gunshots in LS. So here he is, helping Michael out like the good Paul he is. Afterwards, Michael met with Trevor, where we closed the deal about doing the big one. 
So Devin being Devin wanted us to close the film studios and Michael being Michael couldn't let that happen. So he did nothing and Molly got dusted anyway. And yeah, I'm sorry, but I kind of forget about Lamar. He did not forget about us. So he got in trouble just to see us. Thanks, I guess. So we managed to bring him safe home. And what is his response to that? He starts asking for a quick hustle. And Frank, who I thought would be the only one to not fail the challenge, slided him a 50. Dude, there was something I couldn't avoid because it is in a cutscene again. Again. So here we are, so close to the end line, frankly stumbled over Lamar's greed. You know who isn't greedy at all? Our biggest spender Michael, who tried to buy a really expensive suit for his movie premiere. But luckily we had that tuxedo, for some reason I still don't know. Michael realized fast the movie is going to flop and rushed home where he found Devin's Meriwether colleagues and dropped them hard. You know what else is dropping hard? Michael and the rest of the crew are gonna drop hard in the crash when they finish the, the big one. one! And of course Franklin had to use the big drill, he's the only one who knows how how to handle the heavy duty machinery you know what i'm talking about so here we are trevor got the gold and franklin dropped the last swat dudes which came down like spider-man but where is michael oh yeah he's upstairs doing michael stuff we escaped with the getaway car and this was way easier than it should have been. I just chilled in the parking lot for some minutes and that's all it was. Here we are, the last goal is dropped and we managed to finish the big one! So this long journey, this is it, the last mission of the game. Where in my opinion the only possible way is number C, the death wish. So I went to Lesta who was going to help us with our decision, at least I thought so. Kill Michael, then kill Trevor. Man are you for real? But yeah, he was not a help at all. Nevertheless, he still had a plan for us. So we met with Lamar, Michael and Trevor at the foundry, where the pieces all came together. And we f***ed up everything that went into our way. We made them all disappear. We made our last enemies disappear as well. Trevor got rid of Haynes. <coughs> Trevor got rid of Haynes. <coughs> okay, Trevor got rid of Haynes. Ah, okay, Trevor got rid of Haynes. Finally. <laughs> Franklin clapped Mr. Chang, which is way easier than it should have been. And Michael took care of Stretch, who was not such a big deal in my opinion. But hey, if I may kill somebody, I'm okay with that. While Michael was playing some gangster in the hood, Trevor took care of Devin, who chilled in a box like a pussy. Ah yeah, here we are. That's it, GTA 5, all done. What a shame. But hey, how about the challenge? Our smallest spender was Franklin with just 50 baccaroonies. Trevor on the other side was hella fine as well. His total spend was $472. And the only family that we have, Michael, has spent whopping 7k. This adds to a total of $7,522, which I needed to finish the story of GTA 5. What is the conclusion out of that? Yeah, don't start a family or you will spend a hell of money on your kid. That said, have a nice day. Thanks for watching. If you liked it leave a like if not a dislike and i see you in the next one cheers <laughs>